Let's get some celebrity sleaze right now. Well, this was all over the place over the weekend. Even happening to celebrities, Kristen Bell, Dax Shepard, kicked out of Logan Airport barns for trying to sleep there after a flight delay. Yeah, they were kicked out of the airport. There were nine hours of delays. They could not find a hotel room within 50 miles, so they kind of camped out at the airport. And, of course, they went to Instagram about it, both Kristen Bell and Dax Shepard. It was actually not funny, but funny. Check this out. This is perfect. How much money have you spent on blankets and neck pillows? $350, but then you went. And you spent a little bit more. 250 for, for bed sheets. Oh, my God. Okay, so we're at $600. Could have it's, been a really nice hotel, but they're all taken. $600 a night to stay at Boston International. The punchline is... Even though I spent three fifty on neck pillows and blankets, I decided to just buy one toothbrush for the whole family to share. I wanted to save two two dollars and thirty cents, so we were ahead a little bit. We're ahead seven dollars and fifty cents. Just so you can get a mental picture. That's them between two rows of seats at the airport at Logan, with sheets spread out. Their kids have got pillows. Yeah. Why did they get kicked out for that? Because they were there for so long, and they needed to. You know, they were taking up space. And they didn't have a place to stay. They finally, I guess, a friend of a friend of a friend found a place to stay. Then they showed video of that or photos of that crashing at some person's house. Can you imagine? Hey, can you put up some friends of mine uh, for the night? It's uh, Dax Shepard and Kristen Bell. Wow. Just insane. And by the way, I mean, you have friends that are traveling barns. It's like flight delays everywhere. Luckily, I've not been on that side of that. But man, what a bummer for them. But spending that much money, that bed did not look comfortable that they made on the floor, by the way, at all. Mm -mm. One of the founding members of the Eagles died late last week, Randy Meisner. You know, he was the original bass player, sang one of their biggest hits, by the way, Take It to the Limit. He was 77 years old. The band posted their statement on their website, quote, the Eagles are sad to report that founding member, bassist, and vocalist Randy Meisner passed away due to complications from COPD. You remember he quit the band right after Hotel California due to infighting. Here he is along with Joe Walsh, Don Henley, and Glenn Fry talking about that split. All I want to see is five guys happy playing together, you know, and that's what makes the music. Randy never knew how great he was. He wasn't alpha. Confrontations were really hard for him. We were backstage and the crowd was going wild. And our encore number was taken to the limit. People loved that song. They went crazy when Randy hit those high notes. But Randy didn't want to do the song that night. He'd been up partying all night. And Glenn kept trying to talk him into it. He said, man, the, the people want to hear that song. you got to do it. And Randy kept saying no. And the audience, who'd been waiting years to see us do those songs, we just got fed up with that and just said, okay, don't sing it. Why don't you just quit? You say you're unhappy, quit. You know, I didn't know as a peripheral fan of the Eagles that they hated each other so much that those guys fought that much. Unbelievable, yeah. There's a documentary you should seek out about all of that, Mm -hmm. and it's super interesting. Just as a music fan, I think you would dig it. More stories coming out about Sinead O'Connor. You know, she once told her children that if she died, they should call her accountant first. Making sure, quote, the record companies don't start releasing my records and not telling you where the money is. Dang. Isn't that scary that she would do that? And you had, you told me over the weekend, too, that she was like one song away from finishing a new album. I didn't know that. And she also lived in Atlanta from 99 to 2003. Yeah, and I don't know why. Maybe she was working on a record or had friends there. I never knew that story. I Googled the house. It was on Northside Drive, kind of up more towards Holy Innocence, like way back Northside, just inside 285. It's a very covered, mm-hmm. well, now at least. it's You can't see it very well on Google, but it was a modest house with a pool. But how did we not know at the height of 99X that Sinead O'Connor lived three miles from the station? Had no idea. Yeah. Just now finding out about it. Well, this is uh, seismic news. How about this? Taylor Swift fans dancing and jumping around at her two-hour concerts in Seattle generated seismic activity. No. Equivalent to a 2.3 magnitude earthquake. Come on. This is from a seismologist. I'm serious. They were talking about this was even more than in 2011, the beast quake which was the Seattle Seahawks fans celebrated a touchdown. Yes, they are saying, this seismologist said, 
that this is the same compared to that. Wow. I mean, what more are we going to hear about Taylor Swift? Unbelievable. I cannot believe that. Honestly. I, <laughs> Um, here's an updated story for you. You know how we've been talking about fans throwing things on stage at artists? Yeah. I guess Cardi B was at a festival, and she was talking about how hot she was. So somebody threw water at her, hit her in the face. Guess what she did? What? She apparently pelted a microphone back at the fan. She threw the microphone into the crowd. That could have seriously injured someone. Yeah, but they threw first, and that's not saying it's the right thing for her to do, but these artists are frustrated. She just happened to be yeah. the one that's you know that did it, but that, that could really hurt somebody. We talk about the heat of the moment. That certainly was. Oh, Barnes, you knew this was going to happen. Yep. Fox postponed the 2023 Emmy Awards because of the writer's strike. A new date for the 75th edition of the event originally set to air September 18th, has yet to be announced. Canceled. Knew it was coming. And boy, I'll tell you what, temperatures flying, too, over this strike. On Monday, stunt actor Mike Mesa, I guess he was in Harrison Ford's, uh, his double in Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. He lit up the crowd at this union member protest site by lighting himself on fire. He and this other stunt performer, Elena Sanchez, Uploaded this, I guess, to Instagram over the weekend. We are tired of being burned by the AMPTP. Now this is turning violent. Well, they're getting some. They're making some points, but they have got to give eventually, because all of us are going to suffer. Which, by the way, this week Big Brother is back, and I bet they're going to be on. Oh, I was going to say it didn't hurt your well, Big Brother, it's not did it? Scripted, but it's going to be so many. They're probably going to give us more Big Brother, which is awesome. Finally, did you hear this story? Who do you think would replace Lauren Michaels at the helm of Saturday Night Live when Man, he no retires? Idea. I mean, I don't know when he's retiring or stepping down, but who do you think could step in to those shoes? I mean, a lot of people, but the question is who wants it, you know? Yeah. I mean, you have to think it's a former SNLer, right? It would have to be. Well, guess what sources are saying? Who? Guess who it is? Which makes sense to me. Tina Fey. Totally good choice. I mean, think about it. She's yeah, brilliant. she's she's been all over the place doing all kinds of different projects. I think she's qualified big time. Mm -hmm. We're going to end it there. No more seismic news. That is your celebrity sleep. The Morning X with Barnes and Leslie. 99X.